Gotta catch them all, Pokemon fans. Welcome to another Playscape Games video. And today we're very excited. Japan has just revealed the Infinity Zone cards. The complete set list has just dropped on the official Japanese Pokemon website. And all of these cards should be in our August set, Darkness Ablaze. So it's very relevant. Um, we're going to have a quick look at some of the big hitters, take a look at the uh, cards and just uh, have a quick look through at some of the best cards. Big shout out once again to the lovely Pokey Beach for the putting the putting the full set list up including all the commons uncommons and all the other stuff in between so lovely people so this set releases on um darkness of blaze releases on june the 5th eternity's v max is the big one but there's quite a lot of other cards here to love so we're gonna have a have a quick look through and um, we we haven't seen the secret rares yet we're not sure if the rainbow red charizard is going to be in the set but they have revealed a play mat of charizard v max and so maybe that's a clue to say that there will be a rainbow rare in the set as well. Who knows? But yes, it's a nice, nice little set. Um, the set size is it's a hundred cards exactly, which is quite nice. Well, exactly a hundred cards. You don't see that very often. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna have a look at some of these cards. Uh, there's a few nice things here. So Parasect, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So it's a bit slow. I love the artwork, but yeah, Parasect probably won't see that much play. Um, Carnivine. 40 damage. Heal from this Pokemon the same amount of damage this that you did to your active Pokemon with this Pokemon. So, yeah. So again, that's a bit on the slow side. I don't think it'll see much. There's a lot. There, there's always going to be a lot of filler cards in the set, and this is definitely one of the filler cards. Although I do like the return. Draw until you have five cards in your hand. That can sometimes be quite handy at a pinch if you are dead drawing and you just, like, you just need a Draw some extra cards. Um, I think Zash and V is probably still better as a whole, though, if you need to draw those kind of cards. So, here is Simi Sage. There is also a Panseer, Pan Sage, and a, the, the other three monkeys. They all do 110 damage for uh, free colorless energy. Let's see if we can quickly bring those up. Yep, so we got Simi Seer and the water one also down here as well. Simi Poor. So, they all do 110 damage for. Um, free energies basically and they can't use the they can't use the attack again so it may they may seem underwhelming but the fact that they are tri triple colors so they don't need specific energy requirements to do those big attacks is really quite nice because there's a lot of decks like most pokemon v in the future like they're not the ones that don't evolve zashin sandaconda um boltons uh, Bol the weak to fires is not relevant here but th those kind of pokemon v the ones that don't evolve into v maxes um the vast majority of them won't have more than 220 hp there's a few exceptions we've got we've got zamazenta but these are really nice in a sh in sort of a in a vacuum because you can just evolve them straight up and then just put a triple color set, a triple acceleration energy on them and then do 220 damage for weakness so it's unlikely that they'll see much play initially but they're always nice to like keep in your mind they're keeping the back of your mind in case you need to you know have a quick option answer for like a deck that really tries to screw you over like with the weakness and stuff there's definitely been a lot worse cards in, in sets than these trust me they, these these are really i think these are nice little counters for certain certain matchups and stuff see what kind of decks could become popular now this is the um the, the big one this is the one that we put on the video title this is decidui so we're very very excited about this it's not going to be it probably is going to be a bit slow but i think people will play around with it and i think it might get a few wins here and there so we'll look first at the basics so i don't think you're going to use the bird keeper in this deck i'm not sure because the bird keeper is a new supporter card that lets you switch a pokemon from reactive to the bench and then you get to uh, draw three cards. It's like a howl, but with an extra switching effect. This this Rowlet can do the attack for free, which is a 60 damage snipe to one of their bench. If you've used the Bird Keeper, um, the Bird Keeper from that turn. So I'm not sure if you're going to actually want to use Bird Keeper just for the. I mean, it's a nice option to have actually. So depends like how many other supporters you need in the deck. I think in a stage two deck, you'd probably want Rosa, lots of Rosa, so you can get your rare candies. Um, Dartrix is nice artwork, nice Arita artwork there, but unfortunately uh, just 40 damage for grass, nothing nothing relevant, but the big one is the brand new Decidueye card. So Decidueye GX was a very strong card in the past, and we've got another strong Decidueye here. So effectively, <coughs> Forest Camouflage, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon V 
and Pokemon GX attacks. So Pokemon V and Pokemon GX. That's really good. That's really good because the vast majority of the meta are V and GXs. There isn't that many single prize decks at the moment. So obviously, unlike the Hooper from, I believe it was Shining Legends, this is a stage two. So you can't just like, you know, put it straight down and start walling with it straight away. This has obviously the stage two drawbacks that you need to let wait at least two turns to get it out. You need to, you know, get your candies and not brick. And it also, you know, ADP, if ADP can get some early KOs, they might not even need to, they might not even need to like play around this. They can just knock out things on your bench. So, because they can just take free knockouts with after the old creation GX. So, um, it's interesting to see like how this people will play this. Um, the split arrow attack is quite nice as well. It's six, it's ninety damage and there's twenty damage to two of their bench Pokemon. So you can also use it in against stall decks um, to like knock out their dolls on the bench and just do some spread. I think I'd like it a lot more if it was like eighty damage and then thirty thirty to two bench Pokemon because then you could you could hit other evolving things and. Yes, I'm not sure, but I think there will people will play with this. There is going to be a lot of decks that, that will be taken off guard in some tournaments or some capacities. They're not going to have any GX Pokemon as techs. This might start encouraging things like Zash and ADP to start playing like a 1-1 one -one of the baby Copperaja, just so they can take cares against this. Um, this might encourage like Pikachu Zekrom to you know increase their zap dose counts or other other sort of other decks that rely only on GX or VX attackers, like the G, GX or V attackers, they might need to be able to they might need to be able to have to play around this decidueye. So I'm I'm quite excited to see how this goes. I'm not oh I'm not gonna get super hyped on it just because of like the stage two reasons, but and the fact that the ability only prevents the damage from the attack. It doesn't affect the effect so they can paralyze you, they can um, slow you down, they can they can do spread on it and stuff. So it, Dragapult VMAX can still spread to this whilst this one's on the bench. So we'll have to see. I'm, 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 st I'm still quite excited for this. I think this might be the best non-V Pokemon in the set. Houndoom. We talked briefly about Houndoom. It's a bit slow. You'd rather much... And if you check the link in the description, we got the early impressions video from some of the Darkness cards and the VMAXs. Um, Houndoom's a bit slow. Um, you might as well just be playing Torkoal V or I think Heatran... But maybe in the future, people might more people might play Houndoom. Uh, 200 damage is nice, but we've also got Nine Tails V and Cinderace V Max and all, and just so much more like sort of stronger, more immediate impacts like um, Fire Pokemon. But Houndoom's Houndoom's still quite nice in the vacuum. So these are quite interesting. We've got the Blaziken family here, the Blaziken family. So this ability basically means. That's the Blaziken is both a fire and a, and a fighting type. So you're hitting Pikachu Zekrom for weakness, Toxtricity VMAX, as well as Grass Pokemon that you would do anyway with a fire Pokemon, which is quite nice. And the Trober Drive allows you to discard, um, attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your uh, bench Pokemon. So it can self-accelerate, so, so it can accelerate to another Pokemon on the bench. Um, you hit a lot of things for weakness because you've got both fire and fighting type. It's got 170 HP as well, which is really nice, like tanky wise. It's really nice tanky. You could even put like a big child and it goes up to 200. I think most of the time I'd still rather play the Cinderace from Sword and Shield just because that fully powers itself up when it comes off the bench. Um, if you're going to play, I mean, it all depends on the metric. If you're expecting a lot of fighting, you'd probably rather play Blaziken than Cinderace if you're going for a non, a non V fighting deck. But this could be quite nice like if we get more like good fighting decks in the future and if grass makes like a big combat at any point because two sick hitting 260 will knock out all of the relative v's and and sort of like v pokemon and, and those kind of things it also does quite a lot of damage against tag teams so yes quite excited for blaziken and yes we talk about the simi seer uh this one is really interesting so Galarian Darmanitan. So, Darmanitan. It's a fire type, but it uses water energies. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, well, yeah, so you may discard all the water energy from this Pokemon. And if it if you do, uh, it does an extra 60 damage. But the great thing is, it still does 110 base anyway. So, you are doing 220. You're, you're a water deck, and you can do two, exactly 220 against Zashin, which is amazing. And if they use the new tool card that gives them 50, H 50 extra HP after rotation, you can just um, discard all the water energies and take a one-hit knockout on Zashin quite quite easily. So 
I'm quite excited for this in terms of like Frostmoth decks. I don't think it's going to be its own archetype on its own, but because um, it's one of these awesome, like, we don't have this very often, these awesome kind of Pokemon that have different energy requirements for their typing, it just gives you a lot of flexibility. It's, an, it's going to be a nice, like, maybe 1-1 one, one line, maybe 2-2 two, two in some Frostmoth decks. Depends on the meta, but it's really nice to be able to, like, use this to be able to knock out fight, uh, metal-type decks, um... 260, 320. Uh, you're doing 320 against like Copperage of Emax and other sort of like big metal metal type fire Pokemon and grass types. So this is quite nice. I'm I'm quite excited for for this if you're in water decks. I think this is going to be a, a nice little card to have for them to have. Suicune's nice as well. It's nice we're getting another Suicune. We're getting some getting some more legendaries. Beautiful artwork. Um, 130 damage and you return two water energies from the Pokemon into your hand. So. This is quite nice. It's only got 120 HP, but you can put the new tool cards, which I keep forgetting the name of. We should probably do the trainers first, because like some of them are relevant. So the new tool card is called Toughness Cape. Um, it does gives your Pokemon that aren't your basic Pokemon that aren't GXs 50 extra HP. So Suicune attached with this has 170, which is quite nice, and that means the Dragapult can't one-shot it. Um, a lot of other sort of Pokemon like Baby Blounds might struggle to try and they might they have to constantly like discard four four energies which is quite nice and it's only got a retreat cost of one so you if you've got frost moth on the bench like this takes a bit of damage you can use scoop up net pick it back up and then attack with the fresh uh, fresh like sweeping on the bench or just use frost moth to use the same sweeping again so it's quite nice you, re you retain the energy after you attack with it 130 is not definitely nothing to be laughed at from a basic i, I think you can make some kind of awesome like single prize Based Frostmoth deck with this, and and also Spurs Source, also the new Galarian Darmanitan, the the one that hits for, the one that hits with for heart for, for for fire, you know weakness. So, I think both both of these could give you sort of like a nice option there. Um, Relicamp, it helps you find your fossils. You put you put and you put them on the bench. If you're playing a deck with fossil Pokemon, you might. You search your deck for two rare fossil cards and then put them straight on your bench. So I think if you're playing a deck with fossils, you might play just one of this just as an option in case you go second and you need to set up. Because the great thing is you can then evolve them straight on straight on the next turn. So that is quite nice. So we talked about semi poor. Um, so next up we've got the Vanillux lineup. So I'm just gonna have taken a moment to appreciate this beautiful vanillish artwork. Um it's really nice. And also like like 30 damage flip a coin for heads is paralysis. It's quite nice for a stage one. And even like the stage the basic, the uh, the vanilla even the vanilla even like paralyzes, which is really nice. So Vanillux is what we're here for. Um this is interesting. So once you're in your turn, if this Pokemon's in the active position, so it's inactive, you may flip a coin if heads, the opponent's Pokemon is now paralyzed. So it's a stage two. It, if it was a ba if it was a stage one, I think it would still be a very reasonable ability. It wouldn't be broken. But the fact it's a stage two, you have to commit so many spaces for the candies, for the for everything, and then you also need to then stick an air balloon on it to retreat it out of the active. So it's if you can get it up early, it can be very annoying for your opponent to have to play around. And it's also a coin flip as well, so you're not going to be paralyzing very often. I don't think it's an archetype in its own. Some decks might run a, you know, if they got air balloons, they might run like a one zero one line if they're playing candies, like in a stage two, maybe like a Blaziken deck or something. It's in the race, but I, I, I'm not a massive fan of this Vanillux. It's a bit, it's a bit on the slow side, as a lot of stage twos are. So another beautiful um, Kamoya artwork here, just appreciating this beauty, this lovely Marini artwork with the with the Corsler in the background, <laughs> and uh, yes, Toxapex. Discard the energy from this Pokemon. If you do, heal all damage from this Pokemon, which is quite nice. But unfortunately, 80 damage is not going to cut it. Even though they're po even though you're poisoning them, at 90 damage is definitely not worth it for a stage one. So we talked a bit about Dreadnought V Max before. Um, it's a bit on the slow side, unfortunately. It's got effectively a 320, 350 HP with the ability the Hard Shell. But the fact that you're flipping coins to do 240 damage is, is yeah, it's, it, I'm not a massive fan. Potentially you could play in some kind of healing deck, some kind of tanking deck, and just like just do little bits of damage here and there. But then you still have to set up frost moths as well. There's multiple stage ones. Lapras V Max was a nice card, but unfortunately, you know, multiple stage ones in the same deck. Sometimes it can be a bit clunky and yeah. I'm not a massive fan of Dreadnought, which is a real shame because Dreadnought is one of my favourite Pokemon from Sword and Shield. So 
but it does have i think it has potential in light future we're going to get probably get like a special energy for water and the fact that this has got 240 hp it's not going to get knocked out very easily the the, the regular v so it's definitely got some potential it's, i wouldn't i wouldn't rule it out straight away though so we've got more of these fossil pokemon i never really like i hate the design of these bloody fossil pokemon from sword and shield there's like ugly like things i don't know anyway if this pokemon is in the active position uh dracovish your opponent can't play any Pokemon from their hands to evolve their Pokemon. So that is crazy. So that basically means you can't put any VMAXs down. You can't put any Stage 1s or Stage 2s down whilst this is specifically in the active. Unfortunately, it's only got 120 damage um, attacks. So like to, because of the decision, like, more decks might end up playing non-V Pokemon to, to sort of like get around these kind of things. And then obviously this is a nightmare. So... It's just, it only does 123 energy, so you stop them from evolving, but unless they've got, like, no other options, like, you know, they're going to find ways around it. I think they're going to they're gonna gust up something on the bench, then evolve the Pokemon, and then just, you know, start hitting to it. But it's definitely interesting, and they expanded. You could play this with um, Archie's Ace in the hole, sort of get it out. Get out on your first turn if you want to slow them down if they're playing a stage one deck. But I don't think it's I don't think it's overly amazing, but it's definitely something to bear in mind if you're like making decks with no basic Pokemon or gusting, you need to sort of have either one of them so you can play around this. If they end up just leaving this in the active on its own, then there might be trouble, but it's gonna be very hard for them to set that up and you know not lose the game if they get if they get like this one gets knocked up and stuff. I love the, ha the happy fish is quite. The happy fish is a nice fossil. I don't like the other ones, but the happy fish is a nice fossil. Uh, so, 60 damage during your opponent's next turn. Your op this Pokemon takes 60 less damage from from attacks. So basically, that's quite a lot of damage reduction, and it's got 150 HP and it's a stage one with a big charm. That's pretty. That's pretty tanky, I would say. Um, you also have the option of doing, like, for water and a triple colorless energy, triple acceleration energy, 130 damage and putting them asleep. This could be, like, a really nice, like, a little archetype on its own, potentially. I'm not sure. It's, obviously, it's a lot of energy, but we have Frost Moth, we have triple acceleration energy. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's nice. I think it's got potential. I could see maybe it going, like, in, the, like, a non-V like sweet there's a lot of nice water pokemon in this set they, 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 could, they could be in their own like nice little archetype with other water type pokemon like from from this and also with frostmoth so we've got here a minectric this minectric is all right it's not great so it's stage one and it does 150 damage to what and but then you have to do 30 damage to one of your own pokemon so I do like in the background though, you can see like it's got the infinity zone like stuff going on, like this like the swirly vortex in the back, which is quite nice. But there really isn't it's a bit too slow, it doesn't do that much damage, and yeah, there's no real reason to play this, I don't think. Right, so Tapu Coco is really nice. We've got a free retreat, which is like which is really good. Unfortunately it's nowhere near as good as the old Tapu Coco promo that we used to have. It just, it, the allure to draw you two cards can be quite nice, but again, you might as well just play Zashin and not have to stick up this Pokemon, not have to search for it and stuff. 110 damage is alright, but we haven't got Electro Powers, so unfortunately, Tabu Koko might just be a collector's, like a binder collection, sort of, for, for people like those. Dracozolt is, is probably one of the Pokemon I'm most excited for. So... The first attacks, Rising Charge, 30 damage. During your next turn, this opponent's, this Pokemon's Rising Charge attack does 90 more damage. So, I don't, because it's a stage one, I don't think you're going to be getting that many chances to use that. But it could be like, the 30 damage could be like a nice like poke to set up things. What I do like though, is the second attack. It's a, so this is a stage one, it's quite easy to get out. As opposed to like stage two Pokemon. 200 damage, 200 damage is a lot of damage. It can't attack, so <clears throat> it can't use Giga Impact again on the next turn. But the fact that it's all colourless means that any deck that runs Energy Acceleration, Welders, Roiler Boom, um, Frostmoth doesn't work because I think it can only be to water Pokemon. But like any of those decks that kind of run Energy Acceleration can potentially use this. Also, like just triple colourless energy, like when you just use Welder 
attached to the fire and then from the hand of the welder and then use triple colors and you're doing 200 damage unfortunately we don't have electro powers after rotation so this would have been great against like zashins and stuff you could just use electro power to do 230 and then 160 damage is quite 160 hp is quite a lot for like dragapult and things to deal with but yeah I, i'm quite excited for this i think we might get more electric support in the future um, you can also still use like flash energies to like draw for your deck quicker speed energies uh yes i just again the art the i like the artwork but the, just like this big chicken thing like, it's just like it's just so weird these new fossils yeah i do i do like um Dracozolt. and there's a lot of fossil there's a lot of fossil pokemon i mean what the hell is this it's some kind of stupid acorn thing but at arctazolt um whenever your opponent attaches an energy from their hand to one of their pokemon put two damage on that pokemon so that's quite nice. You can just literally leave these sitting on the bench. Like, if you've got two of these on the bench, like, if they welded to a Pokemon, they're going to be taking 80 damage. 20 damage from each Arcazult and one da and 20 damage for each fire. So 80 damage if they welded to a Pokemon and then they attach from hand. They're doing, like, 100 damage. Um, you could Theoretically, it's very unlikely you could get to a point where in a baby blouse, if you've got three of these on the bench, you can... They just knock themselves out if they try and weld it to themselves because they do uh, 20 damage for each energy and... There's three of them, and the, what you yeah, have to attach free energy. So, <laughs> but it could be nice, like if you're playing like a fossil deck anyway, just to put one or two of these on the bench to help set up numbers. You could like run the fossil deck with this, and then you know just keep one or two, of these, and then you're doing you're now doing two twenty if that Zashin like attaches an energy one energy to themselves or more potentially, like some kind of fossil box deck, like electric type fossil box deck could be quite nice with this with these with these two ugly things. But we'll have to wait and see, Hammer. Okay, so a nice, beautiful, it's a beautiful artwork of Jigglypuff, but unfortunately, 180 damage for coin flips is, so yeah, flip two coins, this does 80 damage, absolutely not, no thank you, what a shame, maybe we'll get a good Wigglytuff again one day, the do the wave one was quite nice, but that was a long time ago, <laughs> so we've got a Gothitelle line, and these are quite interesting i do like the first one so look at the fortune i do look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck and put them on the top of them in any order if you end up going second and you're playing a gothitelle deck you could just you know mess around with their top decks or you know make sure that they with they marnie that i know they're not gonna they marnie their drawings to them anyway but like you can, you can screw their top deck for the next turn at least like you're not going to use this very often but it's a nice little option to have and um the big one is the gothitelle itself so 40 damage your opponent's Pokemon is now confused. No one cares about that. But the main thing is the distort attack. It's quite nice. So you get to choose two random cards from your opponent's hands. And then they shuffle them into their deck. Imagine now if they're down to like two or three prize cards. You use reset stamp. And then you use the stalk straight afterwards. They have z literally zero to one cards in their hand. And because there is no escape boards after rotation. Uh, they're Jirachi can only just pray and fire them a supporter if they're lucky depends on the size of their hand if they've even got Jirachi's up so it's just, unfortunately it's a stage two it's gonna be a bit on the slow side and it's weak to darkness so the new Eternatus VMAX can outspeed it very quickly um they could also Eternatus VMAX can also find Crobats and stuff really quickly as well to draw more cards so it's, I like it, but again, there's too many stage twos in this set that just don't really have the power to sort of out, you know, to do better than ADP. Because ADP puts a lot of these non-GX, non-V Pokemon in check, just because of the ultra creation. And yes, if we we just need a better way to get rare candies out. If they if we can figure out a better way to sort of help stage two Pokemon other than just Rose, a heavy Rosa engine, that would be amazing. But yeah, Gothitel is nice, but a bit, bit on the slow side. Uh, a new Golet and Golurk line. Unfortunately, <laughs> all these energies. Just just play the lovely one from Unified Minds or whichever the set is, and do lots of damage extra from. I think it's Unified Minds. Do lots more damage extra for the amount of for, for, for having not having any supporters in your hand, as opposed to this just like stupid energy requirement. So we don't have any more of Malamar. Malamar going post rotation. Rip Malamar. This Mimikyu is lovely. So, your opponent's bench Pokemon can't be healed, the ability says. So, Mallow and Lana, for those that don't know, when they use the effects of Mallow and Lana, the switch happens first, and then the healing, the 120 heal applies afterwards. So, this will stop Mallow and Lana. Just literally, it might, it might be a really nice tech as a one-off in Dragapult VMAX. Just stick it on the bench and stop them from healing from Mallow and Lana. 
there isn't that many other useful healing. I mean, there is the Hyper Potion that people might use um, if they play Energy Acceleration decks because they can just heal the damage. But they can just leave it in the active, so they just heal, heal it from the active. So this is pretty much purely a Malolana tech. But if we do get any more healing effects in the future, this could be really, really useful. It is basic, it's easy to search out, it's, it's a nice, nice little card. So we talked a bit about Glaring Cursler before in the last in the in the big V reveal. Um, this could combo really nicely with a deck. You can even maybe maybe like some kind of troll deck where you leave these on the bench and like you attack with these. So when as long as this is the active Pokemon, whenever they attach an energy to their Pokemon, you do for, you put free damage on them. So you could make some kind of stupid like it's going to be really bad against mills and stuff that don't attach many energies or like decks that slowly like do special energies potentially but um you could end up getting like a crazy deck with like two or three of those those stupid chicken things on the bench and then like the galarian cursor are in the active and then they're just like if i attach energies i just die i just get knocked out it's like it's just, it can be a bit of a problem to it can be a bit of a problem and also yeah it's 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 for each energy they could say so if, if they weld it and they attach from their hand, they're going to be taking 90 damage straight away. So, unfortunately, it's only doing 60 damage, but um, you can do free, free damage counters, um, free damage counters on the bench, and you can help with like setup numbers and stuff. So, I think people will experiment with with like a deck with glaring cursor and the chicken. It's it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I like it. I like it. So we've got a new. Flygon everyone. Flygon is back. But unfortunately stage two problems once again. So Sand Maze. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your uh, your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat, which is really good. Um because you can just stick a V or Vmax Pokemon out and they need exactly switch or Mallow and Lana to be able to um, do the switching because there's no super scoop ups and uh, yeah, there's no super scoop up, so they literally can only switch manually with those two cards. Or they can use Bird Keeper, the Bird Keeper Trainer as well. But um, ability is nice. You could end up stalling some games out of this. Unfortunately, the attack. I got excited about the attack, but then I had to read it quickly. I had to read it better. So Desert Guys, if your opponent, not you, not in play, if your opponent specifically has a stadium, you discard it, and then you prevent. Um, if you do, you prevent all damage and effects done to this Pokemon by the attacks of of the active Pokemon, by the by by the, not any, any Pokemon actually, any any of your opponent's Pokemon. So it's a nice little idea to like potentially wall against things, but unfortunately, it's only their stadiums, and then it gets discarded afterwards. So you need to hope that your opponent's playing a lot more than two stadiums, and most decks at the moment aren't playing more than two stadiums. <sighs> If, it's, if we get to a meta where there's lots of different stadiums around and people are playing decks for three to four stadiums, potentially you could justify using this Flygon, but 100, only 130 damage. Um, and you need to also run like either Colossal, so, then, so you're running like multiple stage twos. I really wish that, that, that we could just figure out like something to help all these stage two decks, but unfortunately... This might just be... It's, I love the artwork. It's beautiful artwork. But this might just be a bit on the slow side, unfortunately. It's normal stage 2 problems. Maybe we'll get a maybe we'll get a Flygon VMAX at some point and, all, and everyone's favourite flying Pokemon can come back. So, really bad Hipper Down. It's way too many energy requirements. Flip free coins. Is, the flipping could be quite nice. Like, if you can get figure out a way, because you can do 240 for free heads. But it's, just, it's too flippy. I like the artwork, though. Nice artwork. We talked about Rhyperia V, unfortunately, just play Sandaconda. Um, four energies for 210, you can't attack next turn. You might as well just play Sandaconda. The only thing that it's got, I would say this has got for it, it's got 10 HP more. So, And, you know, Drill Run discarding energies. If they're playing like Twin Energies or, or Special Energies and stuff, you could discard it, but it's only 80 damage and it's still free energies. It's very, very slow. <clears throat> Simeon. Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. If you're going second, this could be a nice little option to search of, but unfortunately we've had Dunsparce for ages and people haven't been playing Dunsparce that much. So, so we talked about Ariados. Uh, it's nice to... So when you play this card from your hand to evolve your Pokemon, you can switch an evolution Pokemon. Unfortunately, there might not be that many evolutions to switch in the meta. 
we'll have to see. Um, it's it could be a nice one one in the drag in in the Eternatus deck, but I'm not a massive fan. The big one, the big one, the really like big one. So Crobat V. Every single player is going to need at least one copy of this for their decks, regardless. It's exactly the same as Shaman in a way. Once during your turn, you may play this, when you play this Pokemon from your hand your bench, you may draw cards until you have six in your hands. Can't use more than one Knight, ass knight Assist ability, this asset ability per turn. So, it's great. You can run one Dedenne GX and one, one Crobat in most tag team and V decks. Just to give you like different flexibility. You don't want to discard your hands. You can just you just need to draw an extra like three or four cards in the emergency. Just play the Crobat. If you want to get energies in your discard for like for Tapu Koko Prism or whatever, just play the Dedenne. You know it gives you options, and then you will need you will you will trust me, guys. You will need a minimum of three of these, probably four, in the Eternatus V Max deck. So this is going to be the big chase card from the set. It's going to be very expensive. Well, it's not very expensive. Um, I'm not sure about English pricing because in the English market is quite strange. There isn't that many single sellers, but as a whole, but expect like 25 30 dollars minimum for this card at launch it's going to be crazy because the attorney's v max deck is so good it's definitely um a much me better more flexible card than elder Goss. and it also it's got 180 hp so unlike the dene it doesn't die to spit shots and tag bolt so with the Gal new galarian obstagoon so i'm gonna have a quick look at these guys um fortunately we much rather have the 10 damage ping from the old zigzagoon uh, this one, I think, has got 10 HP more than the other Galarian line. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But the Obstagoon here is quite nice. So you might play one copy in the Galarian Obstagoon deck if you're playing Goons anyway. Once during your turn, you may have your opponent discard hands cards from their hand until they have four cards left. So this is a nice control option if you're playing against like Mill or Stall decks. Um, you can just use your goons to evolve. Use your use your use one as and just uh, yeah, this is a really nice option to have. I don't think you'd want to run more want more than one of these because you want the obstruct effect for other decks because you would have to the the other attack is here. It's 180 damage for free energy. You would have to unfortunately play a completely different style of deck. You'd have to play more like triple acceleration energies or twin energies and then you wouldn't be getting your abstract offers real lively. So I think this is just a one-off tech in the Goons deck to sort of help with big hand size decks. But because to be honest, like, even Zashin and stuff, like after the Intrepid Sword or they, you know, they take, or Picarom after they take like a double prize knockout of, of Tag Bolt or something. If they got like a, a card of like eight to nine, eight to nine, hand size of eight to nine cards, that they're just gonna like be so sad that you're gonna force them to discard four or five of the cards, even if they like just keep supporters and stuff in their hand. It's really still, it's a nice little option to have, I think, for the goons decks. But I don't think it's a deck on its own right. Um, shout out to this beautiful scrafty artwork. It's been all over the, the scraggy artwork. It's been all over the Facebook. Look at them like running down the street. You're happily, it's lovely. Scrafty is unfortunately very bad. Um, if you've played the new peers supporter, it does ninety damage. Uh, more than 90 plus 90 but there's no real real way to accelerate it unfortunately there's a new Malamar unfortunately it's nowhere near as good as the old Malamar um, so confuse, Confusion for 50 damage is quite nice a bit slow um, random pick, flip 2 coins, it does 40 more damage for each head so there's a lot of coin flipping in this set and unfortunately most, all of them are really bad for the most part I would say it's going to be a while until we actually see people reliably play coin flipping and attack decks. Um, but yeah, shame about it. it's not as good as your Malamars. Really excited about this super. Talked about it a bit before. It's like Zapdos from Team Up. If this Pokemon moved from the active to the bench, um, it so if it, if it hasn't moved, so if you just like leave it in the active between turns, it will do zero damage. But if it's moved from the bench to the active, it does 90. So really nice in the Eternity's VMAX deck as like a one-off. Doing that 90 damage to like finish something off and you're leaving a one prize Pokemon instead of a three prize Pokemon in the active. Seems really powerful. Some Aurora Energy decks might even end up playing one copy of this just to do 180 damage against Dragapult and other Dark Week stuff in the future. We'll have to see. It's a nice little, it's a nice little flexible card. I really like that Hooper. So we got a nice little um, Nicket and Feeble. Like, again, beautiful artwork here. The Feeble, you search your deck for up to two cards and then put them in your hand and then shuffle your deck. So, unfortunately, it's a stage one. It's a stage one. It's just so bad. Uh, beautiful. Uh, nice artwork, though. A nice Kamaya Yama artwork there. 
Now, here's the meat of the, the big one. The one that we're all excited for. The one that I'm going to be testing pretty much from next month onwards. Um, Post-rotation testing. Eternatus V. So, we've talked about this again before. This is the easily the best... The, these cards here are easily the best cards in Infinity Zone. Um, they, are, they are powerful. They are broken. The 300... The fact it's even got... I, I would even play this deck... This, this card even had 310 HP. That's how strong it is. The fact it's got 340. You're doing... And you're doing 30 damage for all of the Pokemon... The Darkness Pokemon on your side of the field. Including itself. So, with the ability that gives you a Skyfield effect for Darkness-type Pokemon... Um, so you can only play Darkness type Pokemon in the deck if you wanted to make it work well, but you've got Crobat, you've got Zigzagoons to do extra damage, you've got Absols to screw up their retreat cost. You can do, I believe, 30, 30, 100, 80, 210, 200. I believe it's 270 total damage, which is a lot of damage. Um, it, it's just so filthy. It's only got two energy requirements. You can use the basic, the V, to energy accelerate to it with the Power Excel. So you may attach one Darkness energy from your hand to your to one of your bench Pokemon, so even if for some mad reason they're able to do 220 on the next turn, uh, you can just you can just just destroy them. I just attach another energy and destroy them. You can use capture energies as well. It's brilliant because unlike um, Dragapult, which is psychic, psychic, this is darkness colorless. So you can use capture energy to set up your bench quicker. You can use weakness guard energy if you expect Sandaconda. I expect Sandaconda to come back because of, in a bit it's come in a big way because of how strong this card is, but. Yeah, this is very strong. I'm very excited to play Eternatus V Max. I'm considering like playing it in a full on turbo version with like Crushing Hammer. It's very similar to like the current Dragapult list. We'll have to see. Unfortunately, you will need three to four copies of Crobat V if you want to play this deck. So make sure you get your pre orders in early. So the Caesar and Caesar V Max. Unfortunately, the Caesar itself is not amazing. You can discard a, a tool and a special energy, it can be quite nice if they are playing special energy decks, but. We really want to see the big one, and unfortunately, I do not like it, guys. So, Metal Colorless, during your next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. <sighs> Two energy. It's just like, even Copperaja VMAX, like, it's just, and then 190 damage. I really like Caesar, which is a real shame, because lots of people love Caesar. Caesar is probably amongst the top, like, five most popular Gen 2 Pokemon from the Hoenn, from the Johto region. And, yeah, Caesar is just very slow. You might as well just play, like, a Zashin deck and then just use the new tool cards or um, just play Copper Rider V, v Max, have an extra 20 HP and do, like, 240 damage for an extra energy instead of 180, which is going to be irrelevant numbers against most, like, V Pokemon. It's a real shame. Beautiful artwork, though. I love the artwork, so I'm sure collectors will still love it. Um, Skarmory, really bad. It does 50 damage if it has a tool card attached to it. Uh... We've got a new Clink Clang and Clink Clang line. So this is quite nice. I might actually play around with this one time. Maybe like have a little meme deck with battle with it on uh, for Meme Monday on my Twitch channel. Uh, link in the description, twitch.tv forward slash playskit games. So if there is no Clink or Clang, so it doesn't, you don't have to have both. You just need to have either the basic or the stage one. Um, this attack does nothing. But I think for 200 damage is really nice. I probably would rather play the Copper Raja from Sword and Shield that does 220, I think, for three or four energies. But that's just because that's a stage one. Um, but we do have access to Jasmine from Team Up. So if you are going seconds, you can search your deck for five metal Pokemon and add them to your hand. So you can just put down like three clinks and then evolve, evolve them up quite quickly. But I think we'd rather play Copper Raja VMAX if you are playing a metal metal type sort of non attacking deck but maybe maybe some decks will need to play like these kind of things because of the decidui we'll have to see how the meta develops and speaking of copper Arch, there's actually another one so this does 220 damage if any of your bench pokemon has damage counters on it so um oh look how, look how cute this is i love this this kind of one but yeah, it can't be affected by any special conditions, so it can't be point bur burn, paralyzed, or confused, which is quite nice. And yes, it's going to be quite hard sometimes to get the damage counters on your own Pokemon because we don't have rainbow energies anymore. So I think you'd rather still play the Copper Raja from Sword and Shield. But it's, it's I think it's a nice little it's a nice little card on its own. Um, really bad. Um, lovely artwork again on the Kangaskhan, but 120 damage if you're 30 plus 90 if one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn. Not great, but still decent, I suppose. 
Um, <laughs> the dance bars. Random, very random dance bars card. So if this Pokemon was knocked out from the damage of an attack, um, you're you're discarded top two cards of their deck. You can put two trick shovels. You can put a trick shovel on this as well. So you're milling four cards from your opponent's deck. But I think you really don't want them to be knocking out your Pokemon. So I think you'd rather be playing like Moltres from Team Up or Send Scorch if you're going to go down the milling route, or just play like. Heavy Chinchido and just focus on Poke Dolls. You'd much rather them not taking prize cards, especially your ADP. So you just put Poke Doll down, stick a Trick Shovel on it, and just use Bell Bella and Bryson Man. I, think, I don't think we're going to be seeing this Dunce Blast be played very much. Uh, Ursa Ring, just another filler card. Very, very slow. Um, beautiful Teddy Ursa artwork there. Del Catty. So we've got Del Catty here. Um, yeah, very again, very slow, beautiful artwork. But there's lots of lovely artwork. But yeah, unfortunately, not that many amazing non-V Pokemon as a whole. So Salamence. So this attack does 30 damage to it for your opponent's bench Pokemon. So that's quite nice. Um, you can put a Twin Energy, or you can Welder and attach to it if you go second and do 30 damage to everything. Set up some numbers later for the. VMAX, so I quite like the VMAX. I don't love it. I like it a lot more than Caesar, trust me. This attack does first attack Twin Sonic, 40 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So you don't apply weakness and resistance, obviously. Um, if you've done 30 damage on the first turn, you can then potentially take like a double knockout onto like Jirachis or like Zigzagoons or something that evolves up. Uh, you know, this could be quite a decent little counter to Eternatus VMAX if you can. Use your Twin Flight first, and then sort of start doing Twin Sonic afterwards. But it might be a bit too slow. You're only going to be getting like one or two prizes from knocking out their bench Pokemon, and then they'll just cage like back with a two-turn hit. So, not sure about that. But the Max Swing, uh, 240 damage, really nice amount of damage. Maybe this could be like a fun like green deck because it's quite tanky, obviously, as all V Maxes are. You could just use like Miss Magius, make them go down to two. Make them go down to two, like four prizes, and then um, reset stamp them and force them to knock out two V Maxes. But I think we'd much rather play Sender Scorch V Max. Maybe you're going to go down that sort of like greens, fire, firebox type route. We'll see. Um, it's beautiful artwork, and people do like Salamence. So we've got here the Star Raptor. So, little note here about the Starly. Um, if you've used the Bird Keeper Trainer, there's a few cards that have this, like the Rowlet. Um, you can use this attack for free. So on this turn, so you search your deck for any two cards and put them in your hand. So that could be really nice if you go second and you're playing a bird keeper deck or a deck that uses bird keeper because it's a nice little option to be able to have the switch and the draw free as well. Uh, you can then search your deck and then get your, ha your hand ready for next turn. I don't think you'd want to ever use the Star Raptor because it's very slow. 70 damage, you may move as many energy cards to your Pokemon from your Pokemon to in any, you move all your energy cards around. It's very slow. I don't know why you put it on the stage two and then. Yeah, 30, 170 damage free energy is definitely not worth it. But yes, beautiful artwork. Beautiful, beautiful artwork again. Swanner, so it's got that same Sky Circus ability that the Rowlet and the other one had. You may discard, so you get the attack for free if you use the Bird Keeper on the turn. You may discard one card from your hand if you do. This is a 70 plus 7. So, so it's 140 damage on a stage 1. Even though you're getting it for free, uh, not a fan. But um, always nice to see more ducklet cards. They don't get very print printed very often. Greedent is quite spicy. I like Greedent, so it's not amazing, but it has potential. So you're going to uh, you can so you can remove tool cards for 20 damage. Yeah, stage one. But because hit and run, return this Pokemon and all cards attached to it to your hand. So you're doing 100 damage, you just stick a Twin Energy on it and then you hit and run into a uh, Pokedoll or a Walling type Pokemon. Maybe like maybe like Stack Attacker with the new tool card. You can play like the old Stack Attacker from, I believe it's Team Up or Unbroken Bonds and just put, put like the new tool card on it and make it like a big wall Pokemon. They can't easily knock it out. You just send Super Scoop up and then attack back in with Squovet, uh, Greedent. So potentially, like you could make some kind of nice little hit and run deck there, and it's just cute, it's like little squirrel eating pokey berries as well. I really like it. 
So, those were all the Pokemon. I'm not overly excited about the non-B Pokemon in this set compared to um, Team Up or Unbroken Bonds. But there are a new few nice things here. I think the highlights are obviously the Sidui, uh the fossil type Pokemon, like the combo, the one, the electric one that combos with this, and also the Mimikyu. But I think the the big star of the show is probably going to be the Decidueye with with the sort of the Hooper ability for VNGX. It's a stage two though, so we'll have to see how reliable and useful it is as a whole. So we're going to take a quick look at the trainers and the special energies once again. So, people got overly like, oh, more stuff for control, but confusion, it's it's quite easy to play around. We've got scoop up nets, we've got switches, so you can just switch out of it, and it's going to take up an item slot, so that's like one less item like, at the turn they can use. They could probably still use four crushing hammers, but I think the energy denial is probably more important than just confusing someone. We have to see. If it gets strong, we can also just put a 1-1 line of Galarian Rapidash in our deck. Uh, yeah, have to see. It could be nice in attacking decks, actually, not control decks. Like if you're a, like using a Zashin deck, or you've got like a deck with lots of switching cards, you could use the chip, the the Yellhorn against like their Eternatus V Max, and then force them to need to retreat, or bring out another Pokemon to attack. Otherwise, they're going to be flipping the coin and then potentially losing their entire attack. So, it could be a nice little option for those kind of decks. Turbo Patch is probably the best item in the. In the set. So, flip a coin. If heads, choose a basic energy from your discard pile and attach it to one of your basic Pokemon, excluding Pokemon GX. So, fortunately, you can't use this to power up an ADP in one turn, but you can use it in all sorts of things. So, Zashin, you can use this for. I probably want to play four copies of these alongside Zashin V. So, you've got four metal sources and four of these. So, this is just like an extra metal source for your Zashins. Um, maybe in like a Sandaconda, you could even potentially play this in a Sandaconda deck if you don't want to go down the route of like in a Zygarde Sandaconda, Sandaconda if you don't want to go down the route of using the Colossal which is that stage 2 problem so you just use a Zygarde to accelerate energy and then you can attack more with this and then use like Karate Belt if you're behind on prizes that could be quite nice. Um, there's all sorts of fun things that people are going to do with this card. I'm looking forward to seeing like potentials and combos with this. Unfortunately it's a coin flip so not many people are going to like the, the coin flip fact but at the end of the day, it's a children's card game, and they want people to have fun. So kids like flipping coins. So I, I'm I'm unex I'm excited to at least try this out in some like decks, especially like Zashin and, and stuff like that. So the new fossil is ex pretty much exactly the same as the old fossil, but thankfully it's got 70 HP, so it's slightly more tankier. It won't die as easily to like Dragapult spread. So pretty nice. Um, yeah, so if it, if it get if you if it gets stuck in the active, you can just discard it from play if you need to, or you can just discard it if it's got uh, damage counters on it. So the toughness cape is probably the other big item from the set, the really big one. We get in 50 HP to all basic Pokemon apart from GXs. Unfortunately, you can't put it on ADP, but this now means your session has 270 HP, which is so much HP. It's a lot of HP for for decks to deal with unless they're hitting it for weakness. Very few things can. Thankfully, Eternatus VMAX can still just about one-shot it with a full bench, but this is going to be great in Zashin. Um, I'm probably, apart from Eternatus VMAX, I think some kind of Zashin, Turbo Zashin or Zashin ADP deck will be my other go-to deck post-rotation at the moment. We're just looking at the cards we've gotten, just because of like, the high HP. You now have also got Turbo Patch to get the energies on it quicker. But also, this card is, is not just for V Pokemon. I would say you'd want to pay potentially, like, like I was saying about earlier, the Suicune. The stack attacker from uh, Unbroken Bonds, like making more tanky wall decks, like healing type decks, because we've got Scoop Up Net, we've got, um, we've got like Switch, we've got ways to like play around. Not many, not many decks can reliably hit 170 over and over and over again without drawbacks. So some decks, you can stick this on and you can make like nice little tanky non V decks, maybe like Control Variants. Who knows? I'm very, very excited to play around with that. Not as much of a fan of this Mountain of Smoke as other people are. So it's easy, it's a tool card, so it's easy to play around. When the Pokemon this card is, a, is attached to is knocked out, instead of um, the opponent getting the prize card into the hand, it just gets discarded. So... Uh, it's going to be so hard, because there's going to be a lot of tool scrappers around because of this Toughness Cape um, and Giant Mom and various other tool cards. 
it's going to be quite hard to like get much value from this if you're playing a single prize deck because they're only going to be taking one prize at a time in a v max deck i can you know i can see potentially maybe playing this against like in a dragapult deck so they're not gonna they're only gonna get they're not gonna get any prize cards if they, they instead of like a zero into the free but i think i'd still rather play giant bomb we'll have to see it's not i'm not a massive fan but i, I definitely see some potential in it maybe in the I mean, control decks as well actually that could be quite a nice like you know they got a, they got a zero card a hand because you use like chip chip ice axe and stuff and you know, stop him from getting any tall cards. Yeah, lovely bird keeper. Um, shout out to bird keeper Toby. He's gonna love this card. I just hope the full art card's beautiful as well. Um, switch your active Pokemon on your bench and draw three cards. So it's basically Howl on steroids. Poor Howl has completely been outclassed. He's been power creeps like massively. And um, yeah, so the switching effect is quite nice. It's very flexible. I think some cards, especially those that run Mewtwo or Elder Goss, might just stick like one or two of these in their deck because unlike Tate and Liza, Tate and Liza gave you the flexibility of either doing the switch or the draw, but you had to shuffle your hand back into your deck um, if you wanted to, and you'd only get the, you'd only get this you wouldn't get the, the switch effect as well. Control decks will also love this because they lose Tate and Liza, so now they've got a supporter card they can they can um, they can like use reliably they can use Cynthia and Caitlyn to get this back if needed so I, I think I think Bird Keeper will see some play in the future they probably won't play like there probably won't be a deck that relies on using this for the ability with those birds that we saw earlier but I think it's decent so we talked about Pierre's before in the Infinity Zone sneak preview it's just great because you can get a let's say you're going second you end up going second you're playing Eternatus V Max you just stick a capture energy down on your Eternatus V um, so this searches for capture energy to get you another bench Pokemon, and it also gets you the Crobat and draws you a fresh hand. So it's it's just very flexible. Um, so it searches your deck for a Darkness Pokemon and one energy. So and you can really put them into your hand. I like it. It's going to be very flexible in the deck. I might play two to three copies of this in the turn of three, just because um, just so you can find your Crobats easier. Um, get your you can also get the special Darkness energy. That we're going to talk about in a bit. Free retreating, very good. I like this Pierce card. It's very nice in Darkness decks. Do you know what? Some decks, guys, might even end up playing this just because of Crobat V. Just gives them an extra out to draw in like more cards with that, because they can get their energy card and you know draw the extra cards of Crobat. So it's effectively almost like a like almost like a Lily in a way. So, but a Lily that gets you a um, gets you an energy card of your choice from your deck as well. So it could be Twin Energy, it could be Triple Acceleration Energy. It, I like it. I like it. It's it's fun. Rose is interesting. So you choose up to two basic Pokemon from basic energy cards from your discard pile and attach them to one of your VMAXs. But then you have to discard your hand. So there is the stadium, obviously. We've got Rose Tower. So you may draw until you have three cards in your hand. So you can combo with this. So you can play both cards. You can discard your hand down, get two energies on your VMAX, and then... Um, use Rose Tower to draw more cards. As thankfully, Eternatus VMAX does not need this card because it's only energy requirement of two. It's only energy requirement two, and the V accelerates energy to it. So I don't think you're going to need Rose in the VMAX, in the Eternatus VMAX. But I'm looking forward to maybe trying this with Stonjourner, with like more Peko, like other like VMAXs that have been sort of outclassed or like not looked at too much because of their high energy requirements. We'll see. I don't think this has an obvious place like. In any of those, in anything obvious, like straight away. But um, this could be a nice because we got Mewtwo. This could be a nice option in Dragapult. Um, you could, you could like leave your Drachi in the active, um, use Rose to get two energies back on your bench Dragapult, and then, you know, switch. Uh, I suppose Drachi doesn't have a skateboard anymore. We'll see. It's, it's an interesting card. It, it, it will see some play. So Spike Muff, whenever a player's Pokemon is moved from the active spot to the bench during their turn, you put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So it's a, it's very easy to play around with Chaotic Swell. It's very it's very weak to like counter stadiums. My least favourite stadiums, guys, are the ones that rely on your opponent, like doing something to your opponent. Um, you, if you think about recently, all of the best stadiums that have seen play Power Plant and Chaotic Swell aside, like Giant Huff gets you the energies when you want them. Um, Ultra Space gets you the Ultra Beasts when you want them, you know. Thunder Mountain gives you the energy requirement reduce reduction straight away. Like, a lot of those best stadiums are very much the ones that 
that work on that work when you can play them straight away. <coughs> Sorry about that. And Spike Muff is very much like one of those um, very much counteractive like stadiums. I'm not a fan of it, um, especially with Chaotic Swell being so strong. So we've talked about Rose Tower. Um, it could just be a nice like one for some decks just to have, just to help them stop. But then your opponent gets to use it as well, so it's going to make your reset stamps and your Marnies less effective. We'll have to see. It's a nice option for people to have, though. And so yeah, we talked about hide energy before. It just gives the darkness ret Pokemon zero retreat cost. So you just stick it on your turn as a VMAX. If it gets, if they try and two shot it, you can just switch into the fresh one on the bench and start attacking with that one, and you're very happy. Um, I'm not sure of any other dark decks that would want to use this. Maybe Obstagoon, but you can't use, you can't grab dark this with Rosa. So probably not Obstagoon. We'll have to see. And then powerful colorless energy, the final card. So this is very spicy. It gives a single colorless energy to all Pokemon, but if it's attached to a colorless Pokemon, aka the new dragon type, Salamence, and some of those other dragon Pokemon, um, it gives them plus 20 damage. So there isn't anything right at this moment where I say, wow, I'd love to use this energy to attach to that Pokemon to get some more damage, because the Salamence, you'd probably want to be using Welders. And going from 240 to 260 is very irrelevant in, in the grand scheme of things at the moment with the meta as it is and the Pokemon we have for the Salamence VMAX. So there's nothing I really want to use this for now. But I bet you with Dragon type Pokemon, either using their other typings or the colorless type, we might, we're going to see a lot more strong colorless Pokemon in the future. And this is definitely one by the playset, keep it in the binder. And at some point, you will probably want love to do 20 extra damage with. With, with like attacks with colorless Pokemon. I'm very excited for this um, card um, in, 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 in the future, not now. Definitely not in this, anything in this set. So guys, that was the very quick, well, it was about an hour long. That was the very long set review slash look at the best cards and things we're getting in Infinity Zone. So this set plus the Explosive Walker set with which has the um, the, Salazzle, the Salazzle VMAX and Gardevoir VMAX and some other fire stuff that set and this set will both be coming in our august set darkness ablaze so that's releasing on august the 14th so all the cards i'm talking about here will be in that set i'm very excited to um do a full set review once we get the set list just before pre-releases happen i imagine around like mid to late july with hopefully with english card scans and so we can see if there's any extra surprises and also see like all the beautiful secret rares and stuff. This set might even contain the Rainbow Red um, Charizard VMAX because they just released the playmat with the Charizard on it. So who knows? Who knows? But I'm very excited for this set. Um, this is a lot. I think this is a lot stronger than um, Rebellious Clash as a whole. There's a lot more here to love. Um, don't get me wrong. Dragapult VMAX was very strong, but Eternatus VMAX is just. I'm so excited to try this deck. This could be the next BDF best deck in the format after rotation. We'll have to see. It seems very powerful, and I'm very much looking forward to testing this. I'm going to start proxying this up um, in a couple of weeks and have some games of it, see how we get on. And I'll do a de deck profile for you lovely people as soon as I've got something that works. So, thank you very much for watching this Place Get Games video. Remember to smash that subscribe button, ding the bell. Let me know what cards are you most excited for um, in Infinity Zone. And yes, and also Darkness of Blaze, which have this card as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon, Pokemon fans. Gotta catch them all. Thank you for watching this Playscape Games video. Remember, once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away this beautiful Blastoise and Piplup GX Rainbow Rare card from Cosmic Eclipse. So, PSA 9 graded, very hard to find. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, support the channel, and one of you can be winning this card. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon, Pokemon fans. Gotta catch them all. Thank <laughs> you.